Hello, this is Ryan George from The Thing You're Currently Watching. Please enjoy this pitch meeting for Thor Ragnarok that I made several years ago and then stick around after because I might just talk about it. I might. I I might. While you're doing that, I'm going to drop Bruce Banner. <laughs> okay, so tell me about this Thor script. Right, so it's called Ragnarok. Bless you. No, Ragnarok basically means the apocalypse on Asgard. Oh. What's wrong? It's just that it sounds pretty dark and we're looking for kind of a lighter tone here. Oh no, this is a straight up comedy. It is? Yeah, literally any moment that could potentially be a little dramatic is either turned into or followed by a joke. So you can't really take anything seriously at all. Not really, no. Perfect, because we have a comedy director we really want to work with on this. Who's that? Taika Waititi? Bless you. That's not... Never mind. Oh. So tell me about the new direction you're taking the Thor character in. Right, so what I did was take Chris Hemsworth from Thor. Okay. Then I took Chris Hemsworth from Ghostbusters. Right. And I kind of just squished them into one character. Amazing. So he's a lot dumber now. Oh yeah, he's a lot dumber. Like the movie starts with him talking to a skeleton. Oh, like as a joke? Kinda, but there's also nobody else around. So it's like, who's he doing this bit for? So it just comes across as dumb. Exactly. So it's like either Thor is very stupid or it's a really lazy joke that doesn't actually make sense in the scene. It's not the second one, is it? <laughs> So listen, before we get too deep into the story, we do have to address a big plot thread from the last Thor movie, Loki. Yeah, he's impersonating his father and ruling Asgard. I imagine it's gonna be pretty hard for Thor to deal with. Actually super easy, barely an inconvenience. Oh, what happens? Well, Thor gets back to Asgard and he figures it out. That's like the first thing he does. Taken care of, just like that. So tell me about the story. Right, so the main villain in the movie is called Hela and she's the goddess of death. Okay, now the main complaint about our movies is that the villains are kind of flat and one dimensional. So what's Hela's deal? Oh, you're gonna like this. Basically Hela's deal is that she is evil. Oh, that's good. Yeah, she's like super evil. Very, very evil. Sounds like the perfect villain. Yeah, and she wants to take over Asgard, so she does. She she does that. Very evil. And she's really strong, so she does it pretty easily too. Like she kills Thor's best friends like it was nothing. Oh, but Thor's gonna be devastated. You'd think so, but we're never gonna see him react to it or like even find out because that would be dramatic. Yeah, I really can't overstate how much potential drama we're gonna avoid here. That's what we want. Like in the middle of a spaceship battle, they're gonna talk about orgies. Great. Thor's whole relationship with Jane is like a throwaway joke now. Oh, she was important too. Yeah, super important. Wow. Also, Bruce Banner probably dies, but it's like really funny. Wait, Bruce Banner is in this? Oh yeah, I didn't tell you. The Hulk is like a big part of this movie. Interesting. Yeah, but instead of being a scary monster, now he's like a moody baby. A moody baby. I love it. Yeah, he talks like one and everything. Hey, that's what the people ask for. Is it? I have no idea. Maybe. Anyway, Thor ends up on a gladiator planet and most of the movie is them trying to leave with Valkyrie. Who's Valkyrie? Oh, she's actually from Asgard and she's fought Hela before. And she's on the gladiator planet too? Yeah, she's the one who picks Thor up when he lands there. That sounds pretty convenient. Oh, it's super convenient. Hmm. Yeah, so they go back to Asgard, then they get a demon thing to blow the whole place up and that's, that's it. That's it? Can I see that? Sure. Thank you. Most of these pages are empty. Yeah, well, when I was writing, they were playing a Whose Line Is It Anyway marathon on TV, so I got a little distracted. Great show. But it got me thinking, why don't we just let the actors come up with a lot of this stuff and just kind of end every scene with Thor getting zapped unconscious? Oh, improv. I love it. Yeah, and it should be fun, too, because you know how most movies have, like, one character that's the comic relief to break the tension? Mm-hmm. That's gonna be, like, every single character in this movie. Everybody. Yeah, like, there's a character who's a pile of rocks. Funniest guy in the film. Hey, there's a page here that just says Goldblum. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a character called Grandmaster that I didn't really know how to develop. Oh, so you want me to get Jeff Goldblum to come be Jeff Goldblum? Yeah, I figured that would take care of that. That's smart. I'll see what I can do. Also, you'll see there's a page in there that just says the word cameo. Yep. I just thought it'd be really fun to have a super, super famous person show up for like no reason at all. For no reason at all. Exactly. So people in the audience will be like, hey, isn't that... Why is he... Why is he in this? I know just the guy to call. Awesome. There you go, that's a Bruce Banner. That's Bruce underneath. He's very proud of his banner, wants you to look at it. Full disclosure, I wanted to draw a banner of Bruce Willis, but it ended up looking like a disappointed potato, so I pivoted. That's showbiz, baby. You gotta stay on your toes and accept when you're not able to draw uh, John McClane. So Thor Ragnarok, this was actually the second pitch meeting I ever made. After the Justice League one did pretty well, they were like, can you do more? And this movie had just come out. Clearly still didn't really know what I was doing. This There's barely a plot breakdown in this. It's just kind of a general overview of the movie. And in retrospect, that's probably how I was able to make two of these per week back then. That's 
unfathomable for me right now. That I don't know how I did that for like over a year. I mean, also in retrospect, I wasn't sleeping a lot back then. I was working till 3 a.m. a lot and generally pretty unhappy and my mental health was not going great. Probably a combination of those things. I let myself sleep more now, but also clearly not a lot of research went into this Thor Ragnarok pitch meeting. And I also feel like I hadn't really hit the playfulness properly. This There's some mean spiritedness that comes across in this one. I liked Thor Ragnarok. I don't think that necessarily comes across in this pitch meeting. Obviously, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's like, okay, yeah, all his friends are dead and we're just, we're not gonna address that. That's kind of weird. Also, that thing where the previous movie ends on such a big note that the writer and director were clearly setting up for the next filmmakers to dive into and Taika was like, no, no thank you. It has vibes of Luke Skywalker throwing the lightsaber over his shoulder, just the next director being like, no, I don't, I don't want to do that thing you set up for me. Now, last revisited episode, I did something kind of new where I actually edited the Google Doc, the original Google Doc of this script. Judging by the comment section, generally most people seem to enjoy that, so I'm gonna do it again. And for those who did not enjoy that, I'm gonna include some chapter markers for the video so you can just jump forward to the Q&A. Or if you don't wanna see any of that, you can change video. There are dozens of videos on this website, billions of dozens even. So here goes that, the Google Docking portion. Ladies and gentlemen, they said it couldn't be done, but I have successfully opened a Google Doc. I guess it's true what they say about the cloud, you can get, you can access your old files that are on there. So here's something that kind of pops out to me. The producer guy says, so tell me about the new direction you're taking the Thor character in. But writer guy didn't say anything about a new direction, so I would rephrase all of this section. If I were writing this now, this line would be, so what's going on? with Thor, straight into the point. And this right here, I'm using six lines to say that Thor is gonna be dumb now. And to make a comparison to Chris Hemsworth in Ghostbusters. There's a better way to do this, I think. So I think what I'd do is I would say, well, I was thinking that Chris Hemsworth could play him a lot more like his character in Ghostbusters. Then I'd have producer guys say, so like a lot dumber. And then I would lean into how much people didn't like Ghostbusters to highlight why this was maybe a questionable decision to make. Oh yeah, super dumb, because people loved Ghostbusters. Did they? Maybe. So how dumb we talking? Then I could go into the skeleton thing where I'd just go, well, the movie starts with him talking to a skeleton. So then yeah, there's the talking to the skeleton bit. Who's he doing this bit for? Instead of having producer guy say, so it just comes across as dumb, which is just a, a nothing filler phrase. That's just a reiteration of what we're talking about. Now that I say things are tight, I would make this into a tight bit. Oh, uh, doing your own bits is tight. I think that hits the, what the hell are you talking about, producer guy note quite well. Then I don't like that I called the joke lazy. That's mean spirited and not the vibe I want to go for. I do think that the <laughs> clearing throat thing is kind of funny, but not worth it for the meanness of that other joke. So this would go bye-bye. Also just in general in this script, I, I did a thing a lot where producer guy kind of just repeats a part of screenwriter guy's previous sentence. For example, here, a uh, famous person shows up for no reason at all. For no reason at all. That's gonna be like every character in this movie, everybody. So if I were to rewrite this, I would focus on making it more of a back and forth. These two characters seem like they're not yet uh, distinct. And then, yeah, I would just, if I were to redo this, I would break down the plot a lot more. But I was just a child when I wrote this, no older than 27. So I will cut myself some slack. S getting into pants making. So there you have it, a little bit of rewriting that I did just there that you saw and you watched. And now it's question time. With what skills do you credit the success of pitch meetings? What skills would you tell aspiring creatives to focus on? I think a good chunk of the success of pitch meeting off the bat was good luck and timing. You know, there were a couple of movies that came out back to back, Justice League, and The Last Jedi. But in terms of skills, it was just many, many years before I even started pitch meeting of doing lots of writing and acting and editing and shooting and all that jazz. I don't think I could pin it down to one skill, but a decade of doing all of them. And even with that, as you can see, these early pitch meetings are rough, rough. Rough. So in terms of specific skills that I would recommend aspiring creatives to work on, I don't, it really depends on what creativity you're doing. I guess my unfortunately not super helpful advice is to just do it a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, even if people aren't watching. Cause they probably won't be for a very long time. And that's actually a good thing. One thing I will say though, in retrospect, right before I started pitch meetings, I did sell my soul to the devil. Kind words and then question, maybe you already answered this. Do you do any other writing? I do, I dabble, I dabble and I do. But making a pitch meeting every single week and making a sketch on my own channel every single week, there's just not a lot of time for me to dive into it. 
it, but I do once in a while. I did have a TV show acquired last year, which is a whole complicated process, and it probably will never see the light of day, and legally I probably can't say anything more. But for the purposes of answering this question, I do do other writing. Do do? Hey, what'd you study at university? I studied communication studies at Concordia University in Montreal with like a focus on film production. And this was right before everybody started having high definition cameras in their pockets. So I imagine those courses are very different today. If there are any film students watching, I'd be curious to know like, what do you guys shoot on your smartphones in class or what's, how does that work? What is the question you most want me to ask you? You already know to go to prom with you. All right, thanks for watching. Please leave some questions in the comments section down below.